Leonardo da Vinci was an Italian Renaissance genius. He was good at many things, but he was most famous as a painter. He was also a scientist, a mathematician, an engineer, an inventor, an anatomist, a sculptor, an architect, a botanist, a musician, and a writer. Leonardo was curious about everything in nature. He wanted to know how everything worked. He was very good at studying, designing, and making all sorts of interesting things. Many people think that Leonardo was one of the greatest painters of all time. Many people think that he was the most talented person ever to have lived. The art historian Helen Gardner said that no one has ever been quite like him because he was so interested in many things and he seems to have had the mind of a giant. And yet what he was like as a person still remains a mystery. Leonardo could do all sorts of clever things, but as a painter, two of his paintings are among the best known in the world. The Mona Lisa is the best known portrait, and The Last Supper is the best known holy picture. He did many drawings. His best known drawing is the Vitruvian Man. It is so well known that even Homer Simpson and Garfield have been drawn in a square and a circle to look like Leonardo's drawing. Leonardo was born on the 15th of April 1452 in the Tuscan hill town of Vinci in Italy in the valley of the Arno River. His grandfather, Ser Antonio, wrote down the details of his birth. Leonardo's parents were not married. His father was a lawyer, Messer Piero Fruosino di Antonio da Vinci, and his mother, Caterina, was a servant. Leonardo's full name was Leonardo di Ser Piero da Vinci, which means Leonardo, the son of Mr. Piero from Vinci. Leonardo spent his first five years living in a farmhouse with his mother. Then he lived at Vinci with his father, his father's wife, Alpiera, his grandparents and Uncle Francesco. When Leonardo grew up, he only wrote down two things about his childhood. He remembered that when he was lying outside in his cradle, a large bird flew from the sky and hovered over him. Its tail feathers brushed his face. Leonardo's other important memory was how he found a cave while exploring in the mountains. He was terrified that some huge monster might be hiding there, but he was also very excited and curious to find out what was inside. Leonardo started painting while he was still a boy. The writer Giorgio Vasari wrote about Leonardo's life shortly after his death. He tells us many interesting stories about how clever Leonardo was. He says that Leonardo painted a round wooden shield with a picture of snakes spitting fire. Messer Piero took his son's painting to Florence and sold it to an art dealer. In 1466, when Leonardo was 14, his father took him to Florence to be apprenticed to the artist Verrocchio. Florence was a very exciting place for a young person who wanted to be an artist. Many famous artists had lived in Florence, starting with Cimabue and Giotto in the 1200s. Everywhere a person looked, there were famous and beautiful artworks. The huge cathedral had an enormous new dome, the Church of St. John had doors that gleamed with gold and were said to be the most beautiful doors in the world. Another church had statues all around it by the most famous sculptors, including one by Leonardo's own teacher, Ferrocchio. If an artist was lucky, they would find a rich patron who would buy lots of their paintings. The richest family in Florence were the Medici. They had built themselves the finest palace in Florence and liked buying paintings, statues and other beautiful things. They were also interested in the study of literature and philosophy. Many young artists hoped to get work from the Medici and their friends. Verrocchio had a big workshop that was one of the busiest in Florence. 
Leonardo was learning to be an artist, so he had to learn drawing and painting, sculpture and model making. While he was at the workshop, he was able to learn all sorts of other useful skills – chemistry, metallurgy, metalworking, plaster casting, leather working and mechanics, and carpentry. Leonardo was not the only painter at Verrocchio's workshop. Many other painters were trained there, or often visited. Some of them later became famous – Ghirlandaio, Perugino and Botticelli. These artists were all just a few years older than Leonardo. Vasari tells us an interesting story from this time of Leonardo's life. Verrocchio was painting a large picture of the baptism of Christ. He gave Leonardo the job of painting one of the angels holding Jesus' robe on the left side of the picture. Vasari says that Leonardo painted the angel so beautifully that Verrocchio put down his brush and never painted again. When this painting is examined closely, it is possible to see that many parts of the picture, such as the rocks, the brown stream and the background, may have been painted by Leonardo as well as the angel. Verrocchio made a bronze statue of David at this time. It is believed that he used Leonardo as his model. In about 1472, when he was 20, Leonardo joined the Guild of St. Luke, an organisation of artists and doctors of medicine. Even after his father set him up in his own workshop, Leonardo still enjoyed working at Verrocchio's workshop. Leonardo's earliest known work is a drawing in pen and ink of the Arno River Valley. It has the date 5th of August 1473 and is now in the Uffizi Gallery. When Vasari writes about Leonardo, he uses words like noble, generous, graceful and beautiful. Vasari tells us that as an adult, Leonardo was a tall, handsome man. He was so strong that he could bend horseshoes with his bare hands. His voice was so beautiful that it charmed everyone who heard it. Almost everyone wanted to be his friend. He loved animals, he was a vegetarian, and he would buy birds at the market and set them free. Very little is known about Leonardo's life or his work between 1472 and 1481. He was probably busy in Florence. In 1478, he had an important commission to paint an altarpiece for the monks of San Donato a Scapeto. The painting was to be an adoration of the Magi, the three wise men's visit to the infant Christ child. The painting was never finished because Leonardo was sent away to Milan. Leonardo was a very talented musician. In 1482, he made a silver lyre, a musical instrument, in the shape of a horse's head. At that time there was a new ruler in the city of Milan in the north of Italy. The Duke Lodovico Il Moro was making all the other rulers very nervous. Lorenzo Medici sent Leonardo to Milan as his ambassador. Lorenzo de Medici wanted Leonardo to give Lodovico the lyre as a present from him. Leonardo wrote a letter to the Duke of Milan telling him all about the clever and useful things that he could do, like making war machines. He wrote in the letter that he could also paint. Leonardo did not know at the time that it was for painting that he would mostly be remembered. Leonardo stayed in Milan and worked for the Duke between 1482 and 1499. Part of his work was to design festivals and carnival processions. In Leonardo's notebooks are drawings of theatre costumes, amazing helmets and scenes that might be for the theatre. Leonardo, like most other well-known artists of his time, had servants, young students and older assistants in his workshop. One of his students was a boy whose name was Gian Giacomo Caprotti da Oreno. 
He was a handsome boy with beautiful long golden curls. He looked perfect as a model for an angel. But he was such a difficult and dishonest boy that Leonardo called him Salai or Salaino, which means the little devil. Leonardo wrote in his notebook that Salai was very greedy, that he was a liar and that he'd stolen things from the house at least five times. Salai stayed in Leonardo's household for 30 years, both as his pupil and as a servant. Leonardo's most important work for Duke Ludovico was to make a huge statue of the previous ruler, Francesco Sforza, on horseback. He started with the horse. After studying horses and drawing designs, he made a huge horse of clay. It was called Gran Cavallo. It was going to be cast in bronze. It was going to be the biggest bronze horse that had been made for more than a thousand years. Unfortunately, the bronze horse was never made. In 1494, Ludovico gave the bronze to be made into cannons because the French army was invading Milan. The huge clay horse was still standing when the French army invaded again in 1499. This time, it was used for target practice and was completely destroyed. While Leonardo was working for the Duke Ludovico, he had two important painting commissions. One was to do an oil painting to go in a big altarpiece for the confraternity of the Immaculate Conception. Leonardo did the painting twice. He left one with the monks in Milan and took the other painting to France, where it is now in the Louvre Museum. The paintings are both called The Virgin of the Rocks, they show a scene with the Virgin Mary and the child Jesus in a rocky, mysterious landscape. Mary and Jesus are meeting with John the Baptist. There is a story, which is not in the Bible, but is part of Christian tradition, about how the baby John and the baby Jesus met on the road to Egypt. In this scene, John is praying and the baby Jesus raises his hand to bless John. The paintings have a strange, eerie light with soft, deep shadows. In the background is a lake and mountains in the mist. No painting like this had ever been done before. Leonardo's other important painting in Milan is even more famous. It is the Last Supper. The painting shows the last meal shared by Jesus with his disciples before his capture and death. Leonardo chose to paint the moment when Jesus said, One of you will betray me. Leonardo tells the story of the surprise and upset that this caused his twelve followers. He tells the story through the actions and faces of the people in the painting. Some of them are talking, some of them have stood up, some of them are raising their hands in horror. The novelist Matteo Bandello saw Leonardo at work. Bandello wrote that on some days he would paint from morning till night without stopping to eat. Then for three or four days he would not paint at all. He would often just stand and look at the painting. Vasari said that the prior of the convent was very annoyed. He asked Ludovico to tell Leonardo to work faster. Vasari said that Leonardo was worried because he did not think that he could paint the face of Jesus well enough. Leonardo told the Duke that he might use the face of the prior as his model for Judas, the traitor. When it was finished, everyone that saw it said the painter was a masterpiece. But Leonardo had not used proper fresco for the painting. He had used tempera over gesso, which is not usually used for a wall painting. Soon the painting started to grow mould and flake off the wall. In a hundred years it was completely ruined. Even though in some places the paint has fallen right off the wall, the painting is so popular that it is printed and copied more than any other religious painting in the world. In 1499, Ludovico Moro was overthrown. Leonardo left Milan with his servant Salai and his friend Luca Pacioli, who was a mathematician. They went to Venice. 
Leonardo worked as a military engineer and architect. Because Venice is a city on many islands, Leonardo tried to think of ways to defend the city from naval attack. In 1500, Leonardo went back to Florence, taking his household of servants and apprentices with him. The monks from the Monastery of the Holy Annunciation gave Leonardo a home and a large workshop. In 2005, some buildings which were used by the Department of Military Geography were being restored. The restorers discovered that part of that building was Leonardo's studio. Leonardo started work on a new painting. He drew a large cartoon. This means a drawing that is planned for a painting. The cartoon showed the Virgin Mary sitting on the knee of her mother, Saint Anne. Mary holds the baby Jesus in her arms. Jesus stretches out his hands to his young cousin, John the Baptist. Vasari said that everyone was so amazed by the beautiful drawing that men and women, young and old, came in large groups to see it, as if they were attending a great festival. The drawing is now in the National Gallery in London. Even though it is old and faded and is kept in a dark room, people go to the gallery to sit in front of it every day. Like many of Leonardo's other projects, the painting was never done. In 1502 and 1503, Leonardo worked for Cesare Borgia, a powerful noble who was the son of Pope Alexander VI. Leonardo travelled around Italy with Borgia as a military architect and engineer. Late in 1503, Leonardo returned to Florence. He rejoined the Guild of St. Luke. He was given a very important commission. The town council, called the Signoria of Florence, wanted two large frescoes painted on the walls of the most important room of the Signoria Palace. Michelangelo was to paint the Battle of Cascina, and Leonardo was to paint the Battle of Anghiari. Leonardo began the project by studying and drawing the faces of angry men and fighting horses. These drawings can still be seen in his notebooks. But unfortunately, this was to be another failure for Leonardo. When he painted the picture on the wall, instead of using fresco, he mixed the paints with oil. The paint would not dry. Leonardo lit some fires to dry it, and the painting melted. Many years later, another artist, Peter Paul Rubens, drew a copy of the middle part. After a time, the Count Council just covered it up and got somebody else to paint the wall. Michelangelo did not finish his painting either because the Pope called him to Rome. In about 1503, Leonardo began painting the portrait of a woman known as Mona Lisa, the most famous portrait that has ever been painted. He continued working on it for many years. It is a small picture painted in oil on a wooden panel. It shows the face and upper body and hands of a woman. She's very plainly dressed. For a portrait, a woman would usually put on her best clothes and jewellery. Mona Lisa has a dark dress and a fine black veil over her head. Leonardo often left symbols in his paintings that give clues about the person. The unusual thing about this painting is the smile. The smile is the clue to her name, Mona Lisa Gioconda. Gioconda means the joking one, and Mona is short for Madonna, which means my lady. The reason why the painting is so famous is that it seems to be full of mystery. Mona Lisa's eyes look out at the viewer but no one can guess what she is thinking. Her eyes and her mouth seem to be smiling. This is very unusual in a portrait painting. Most people in portraits look very serious. It is hard to tell what Mona Lisa's exact expression is. When a person wants to read another person's feelings, they look at the corners of their mouth and their eyes. 
but Leonardo has painted soft shadows into the corners of Mona Lisa's mouth and eyes to disguise her expression. The soft shadows are also found on the sides of her face, her neck and her hands. The way that Leonardo uses the shadow is called sfumato, which is the Italian word for smoke. Vasari said that the picture was so beautifully painted that every other artist who looked at it thought that they could never paint so well. In 1506, Leonardo went back to Milan with his pupils and lived in his own house in the Porta Orientale. Some of the pupils became painters. Bernardino Luini, Giovanni Antonio Boltrafo, Marco Dorgioni, and others painted many Madonnas, which can still be seen in art galleries and churches. One of the pupils was a young nobleman called Count Francesco Melzi. Melzi never became a very good painter, but he loved Leonardo and stayed with him until the day he died. In September 1513, Leonardo went to Rome and lived there until 1516. He lived in the Vatican. The three greatest painters of the High Renaissance, Leonardo, Michelangelo and Raphael, were all working in Rome at the same time. Even though their names are often said together as if they were friends, they were not. Leonardo at this time was in his 60s. Michelangelo was middle-aged. He was not friendly to either Leonardo or Raphael. Raphael was a very clever young painter who learned a lot by looking at pictures painted by Leonardo and Michelangelo, but neither of them was ever his teacher. In October 1515, King Francis I of France captured Milan. On December 19, 1515, there was a meeting of Francis I and Pope Leo X in Bologna. Leonardo went to the meeting with Pope Leo. Leonardo made an amazing toy to entertain the King of France. It was a life-sized mechanical lion that could walk. It had doors in its chest which opened and a bunch of lilies came out. Lilies were the royal symbol of a French king. In 1516, Francis I invited Leonardo to go to France with him. He gave Leonardo a beautiful house called Clos Luce, sometimes called Clou. It is near the king's palace, Chateau Amboise. Leonardo spent the last three years of his life at Clo Luce with his faithful friend and apprentice, the Count Melzi. The king gave Leonardo a pension of 10,000 scudi. One of the last paintings that Leonardo did was a picture of John the Baptist. His model was Salai, now a young man, with his beautiful long curling hair. When Leonardo was dying, he asked for a priest to come so that he could make his confession and receive Holy Communion. He died at Clos Luce on May the 2nd, 1519. King Francis had become a close friend. Vasari says that the king held Leonardo's head in his arms as he died. In his will, he asked that 60 beggars should follow his casket in procession. This means that each one of those 60 men would have got a clean set of clothes and a good meal on that day. He was buried in the chapel of the Chateau Amboise. Leonardo never married and had no children of his own. In his will he left his money, his books and most of his paintings to Count Melzi. Leonardo also remembered his other pupil, Salai, and his servant, Battista de Velusis who each received half of Leonardo's vineyards near Milan. Leonardo left to his serving woman a black cloak with a fur edge so that she could walk in his funeral procession in style. Salai was the owner of Leonardo's most famous oil painting, the Mona Lisa. He still owned it a few years later when he died after fighting in the duel. King Francis said 
that there had never been another man born in the world who knew as much as Leonardo, not so much about painting, sculpture and architecture, as that he was a very great philosopher. Leonardo did not paint very many pictures, but he drew hundreds of quick sketches, plans, maps and detailed drawings. This is the way that he recorded all the interesting things that he saw, studied and thought about. Some of Leonardo's drawings are studies for paintings. In these drawings, Leonardo planned the things that he was going to paint. Some studies are plans for whole paintings. One of these paintings is the large, beautiful drawing of the Madonna and Child with St Anne and John the Baptist in the National Gallery, London. Many of the studies show details that Leonardo wanted to get just right. One study shows a very detailed perspective drawing of the ruined buildings in the backgrounds of the painting of the Magi. Other studies show hands, faces, draperies, plants, horses and babies. The earliest drawing by Leonardo has a date on it. It is the landscape of the Arno Valley, 1473, which shows the rivers, the mountains, Monte Lupo Castle and the farmyards beyond it in great detail. Leonardo studied all things from life. He didn't go to university to study. He studied by looking at things in the world around him. He looked at things to see how they were made and how they worked. He drew the things that he saw and the discoveries that he made in his notebooks and he made notes about them. Many of these notebooks are now in museums. There are 13,000 pages of notes and drawings. Many of these are scientific studies. Leonardo's notebooks are hard to read because he wrote backwards in mirror writing. Some people think that perhaps he was trying to keep his work a secret, but this is not true. Leonardo wrote, and sometimes drew, with his left hand. In those days, pens were made from a quill, a large feather, that was cut with a pen knife on the end. It is hard for a left-handed person to write with a quill in the ordinary way, but quite easy to write backwards. It is likely that Leonardo planned to publish the studies in his notebooks. He organised many pages carefully, with one study taking up the front and back of each page. There is a page with drawings and writing about the human heart, and a page about the womb and the fetus. One page shows drawings of the muscles of the shoulder, and another page shows how the arm works. The notebooks were not published in Leonardo's lifetime. After he died, they were divided between different people who had known him. They are nearly all in museums or libraries, such as Windsor Castle, the Louvre and the British Library. The Biblioteca Ambrosiana in Milan has the 12-volume Codex Atlanticus. Some of the things that Leonardo studied are the geology of the earth with its mountains, valleys, rivers and rocks, the anatomy of the human body with its skeletons, muscles, veins and internal organs. Leonardo was given dead bodies by the hospital. He dissected 30 dead bodies and carefully drew many of the parts. His drawings of bones and muscles were to help other artists to paint the human body properly. But his drawings of the human heart have been very useful to people in the 20th century performing open heart surgery. He drew the anatomy of horses, cows, dogs and bears, the expressions on human faces, the flight of birds, the weather and its phenomena, the way that water flows, the botany of plants, light, shadows, mirrors and lenses, perspective and the way to make things look far and near, the geometry of solid objects. He drew many careful pictures which were used by the mathematician Luca Pacioli when he published his book De Divina Proportioni. Many of the drawings and notes in Leonardo's notebook are designs, plans and inventions. Some of the things that Leonardo designed are 
costumes for parades, carnivals and the theatre. These were probably for the Duke Lodovico's court. They include armour and ferocious dragons. He designed plans for dams and canals for rivers. He designed a wooden bridge that could be carried flat on wagons and unfolded and put together at the river. War machines, such as an armour-plated tank, an enormous crossbow, and a horrible horse-driven leg chopper. None of these things were ever made in Leonardo's lifetime. He designed flying things with wings that flapped, a helicopter and a parachute and a hang glider. One of Leonardo's servants was injured trying out the hang glider. The parachute has been made and tested in modern times and it does work. He designed churches and castles. It is possible that the castle of Locarno in the south of Switzerland was designed by Leonardo da Vinci. No other building that he designed was ever built. Even though Leonardo lived and died 500 years ago, people still find him fascinating because of his genius and because of the diversity of the things that he was able to do and because of the mysteries that continue to surround him. What sort of a person was he, really? <laughs>